Hey guys, so today we are going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, how long do you think React and Redux is going to stick around? So let's get into it. Now this is a... It's almost one of those questions where it makes me think about this discussion about how fast JavaScript is moving and it almost triggers this little thought oh people are already moving on to be greater and better, better things now if if you think that that's the case I, I will just raise my hand and I will wave it around and I say guys don't don't you don't have to worry about being left behind when it comes to SBA frameworks and so forth although JavaScript moves fairly quickly it doesn't move at the speed where something becomes absolutely redundant in a matter of months or years it it takes well it depends on how many years of course it but it usually takes a little bit longer than that especially for the bigger tools usually the, the thing that changes quite frequently and quite often are these small Complement, uh, complement libraries. The thing, the supporting libraries may be switched out, and you may see new trends in doing some specific thing within, say, a React application change. But switching out all of React isn't, nah, it's it's not something that happens that much. So this question was basically posed by someone uh, by someone who seems, at least from my perspective, to have this, uh, well. I think that the root cause for this question comes from a sensation of, or rather, a desire to feel security. And what I mean by that is that it might be the case that you've heard that JavaScript moves very, very quickly, and you're right now maybe in the process of uh, gearing up towards learning things like React and so forth. And you may be a little bit worried that, oh, by the time that you've learned all of these things, right, it's not going to be relevant anymore. Something is, else is going to come along and it's going to make everything else completely redundant. And if, uh, if that is your worry, I, I think I need to give you a little bit of context on things. You see, as I said, the small libraries may change from time to time. And that is in a way fairly okay because usually the scope and the work effort that is, that is required in order for you to learn a small library or so forth is usually it's very very low and on most projects nobody really really puts a requirement on you for knowing something like i don't know name your favorite small time library uh lodash is a good example because the time investment for learning something like Lodash is very, very low. If you really, if you know, on assuming, of course, you actually know JavaScript and you know programming. But for things like React and so forth, which is a framework where we are talking about a much bigger, like a much bigger concept, it's a lot larger than something like Lodash. That time investment, that's one of those big, big time investments. And it's also one of the main things that is part of your project. And that's usually what comes on the job specifications where people are looking for that sort of thing. But does it change that frequently? Does it mean that you're going to have to kind of have a, you know, a finger out and feel the winds and see if it's going to switch? Well, think about it this way. Until, I think now it's a little bit more than five years ago, but let's say seven some ish it the whole sba framework and the whole sba application trend really started taking off when products such as say angular and ember and so forth came came around and like made popularized it and that is about seven years ago ish what did we do before then well before then there was a bit of a range of things but the heavyweight champion of the web and doing javascript on the web was jquery so jquery has been around for a lot longer than seven years a lot longer in that time period between the fact that jquery was introduced to the web and it became this massive massive success and up until now nowadays there's quite a few years. And the same thing goes for what you're seeing today. The investment into SBA frameworks is pretty big. It's 
it's very big in fact actually so what do you what is on the market right now that would disrupt such such a thing well in javascript land there's nothing right now there is nothing in the ecosystem that would has any potential to destroy uh, to, in my world at least to really pose a threat to say react nothing we can talk about preact and we can talk about all these other frameworks but the thing is guys usually these things go that something becomes immensely popular in a fairly short amount of time if it's if, and then it kind of becomes the new de facto standard but react has pretty much established itself as the top like the top dog in the sba framework world followed by angular and Vue. It doesn't mean that that can't change, but it's very unlikely that it's going to change because these things are not, I mean, it's not that flaky that, you know, one day somebody is the absolute most favorite thing and then from nowhere something else comes and just completely takes over. Because, well, it's, uh, it requires, it, it, there's a lot of things that need needs to actually fit for that to actually happen. So when it comes to, if you feel this stress over that, oh, I'm learning React or Angular or Vue or so forth, maybe they are just going to go away and now everybody's going to go over to WebAssembly, for example. You don't have to stress so much about that because even if we today say that, hey, you know what? This is the new best, big, biggest, best thing. That doesn't mean that all of the relevancy for this specific, for say React, just goes away overnight and that's the thing that i think a lot of juniors or a lot of beginners may have uh, they may be afraid of that and that's what i want to tell you guys that guys just because one thing becomes more popular than another doesn't mean that oh yeah all the relevancy for that thing that you, that was before is now gone i mean take a look at angular for example if you are quote unquote the second best thing i mean it's still there's so many jobs there's so many opportunities re related to Angular. The same thing, I mean, Vue has it as well. So just because you are, once again, this mindset that, oh, you should you bet on the best thing, is it still relevant? Uh, it kind of depends on you, but if you're afraid that you will make that bet on one of these really big frameworks, and that's just, that relevancy is gonna go away, then you don't have to worry so much about it. However, if you are betting your money on things such as, say, Elm or Ember or these sorts of frameworks, which are a little bit lower down on the popularity scale, that is a risk, I would say, uh, in comparison. It's uh, it's not impossible, absolutely not, but the, they are not as established in the industry as React. And the same thing goes for Redux. A lot of people ask about the context API for React, and I say that, yeah, it's great that, I mean, the more stuff that we can put into the actual framework, the better, because standards are a good thing. But that doesn't mean that everybody's just going to migrate all of their applications from Redux to the context API overnight. It's still going to be relevant to you. And some people, and that's the thing we should always remember, just because ev you know everybody does it doesn't mean that everybody actually does it. It's just that a lot of people are jumping on that hype train. I mean... There's tons of people, tons of applications out there today, tons of companies who are not trying to be cutting edge. They need something that works and they are not trying to migrate over to things and they're not moving that quickly, even though maybe the bleeding edge of JavaScript is doing that. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you are scared that you're making a bet on, say, React and you're worried that by the time you kind of get good at it, it's going to be completely go, you know, it's going to become a redundant. I, I can calm you and say you're most likely just scaring yourself. You're getting worried about something that is very, very, very unlikely to happen. Because even though JavaScript moves really quickly, these big tools, they stick around. As you said, jQuery is still around. I mean, it's still you can still find jQuery on quite a lot of sites. And it's over 10 years old now. So think about that when you're starting to, when, if you start to stress yourself up the big tools in JavaScript stay fairly stable. It's usually the smaller or less popular tools that switch back and forth. Have a great day.